Hello everyone, welcome to Drishti IAS. My name is Saloni Nandkyolir and in today's session we will discuss the Forest Declaration Assessment Report of 2025 and understand the global deforestation and land degradation situation. So let's get started. So this report which is called the Forest Declaration Assessment Report 2025, this is basically released by an independent civil society but it is also coordinated by the UNDP. And this evaluates global progress towards meeting commitments made under various international declarations. So some international declarations which specifically focus on deforestation and land degradation like the New York Declaration, New York Declaration of 2014. What else? COP26 which was held in? Glasgow. Now, there were many pledges that we took at COP26. One of them was that we want to halt and reverse deforestation and land degradation by 2030. Similar things happened at the New York Declaration also where we decided that we want to end deforestation and also restore land degradation approximately 350 million hectares of degraded land needs to be restored same by 2030. So these are some pledges that we took internationally and this report basically evaluates how has the world been performing at these pledges. Now this is a report, it is going to have some data but please note that this data is going to accentuate your answers in means. So please make a note of all these data. Now, the report finds that the world is far off track. So, are we on track? No. In fact, only 37% of what we need to achieve by 2030 has been achieved so far. Only 37%, which means that we are way off track. Deforestation still remains high. Deforestation is a big challenge here. 8.1% million hectares of forest land has been lost to deforestation and out of this 8.1 million hectares, 80% of this land belongs to tropical forests. 80% has happened in the tropical areas. Now, these tropical areas, they are rich in biodiversity. So, there is a biodiversity loss also that is linked to forest loss. And these forests, they are basically what? They are major carbon sinks. So, when forest loss happens, something else also happens. CO2 emissions will increase. So, there is an increase of 11% in the global CO2 emissions because of this forest loss. Then agriculture is the primary driver here. So it also studies about the reasons for which this deforestation is happening. And it turns out that agriculture is the primary driver. So much so that 86% of the global deforestation has happened because forest land has been converted to what? To agricultural land because we want to maintain food security. That is why agriculture has become our primary driver when it comes to deforestation. And restoration activities are happening, but they remain far below potential. Only 0.3% of the global restoration potential has been utilized so far. So this data is alarming. It is concerning. The situation is not good. Deforestation is happening. Land degradation is happening. Land restoration activities are not happening at the same pace, which means that there are a lot of issues. Issues like financial issues. Governance issues, and it was also seen that the local communities and indigenous communities' participation was not as much. So, governance issues within governance issues only, we realized that these local communities were not made a part of the entire restoration process as they should have been. So, local participation here has also been very restrictive. Now, if we talk about the financial challenges here, so we realize that the public investment in this thing, public investment in dealing with deforestation, that has increased. So, we increased it from 1.7 billion US dollars 
to 5.7 billion and this happened between 2022 to 2024. So this is a good thing that we increased our investment. Then what is the problem? The problem is that agricultural subsidies, which are a major driver of this deforestation, they have also increased. So agricultural subsidies have also increased and the public investment in deforestation has also increased. But the gap still remains the same because agricultural subsidies have also increased. That is where we are lacking. That is why we see this financial gap. As much that we still need some 120 to 300 billion US dollars. If we wish to achieve what? If we wish to achieve our 2030s target, this is a huge financial gap. We still need approximately 300 billion dollars because agricultural subsidies are also increasing. In fact, there are some countries who basically incentivize all these things, incentivize the conversion of forest land into the agricultural land because they want to achieve food security. So these things are also happening at the global level and we see that there are major financial challenges, implementation challenges, governance challenges and local participation is also not as much. Now what is the situation in India? India's situation is also not great. So what is the central law that basically governs forests in India? It is the Forest Conservation Act of 1980 FCA. Now, this basically governs with all kinds of regulations, all kinds of permissions that are required for dealing with forest. So, when any forest land has to be converted into a non-forest land, into an agricultural land, we need clearances under FCA. And FCA covers all the forests that have been legally declared, basically all the land that has been legally declared to be a forest by the government of India as well as deemed forests. Now deemed forests are those forests which are not legally declared to be the forest by government but they have been declared by the Supreme Court as per a 1996 judgment. TN Godavarman, uh, Godavarman judgment. So there was a judgment that came in 1996 and according to that judgment, there is some land, there is a criteria for land to be classified into forest land even if it is not legally recognized by the government and those kinds of forests are known as our deemed forests. So FCA earlier in the 1980 version, it used to consist of normal forest as well as deemed forest. But then an amendment came. Amendment 2023. Now this amendment now only declares land which has been legally recognized by the government to be a forest land. Which means it does not recognize deemed forests. It does not recognize the forests which were declared by Supreme Court's judgment, which means many of the deemed forests have now uh, basically uh, lost their recognition as forest, which now means that lesser amount of regulations are going to be applied on all these things, which now means that basically a lot of land has been moved out of forest. So naturally forest loss has happened because the definition of forest has been narrowed down. And earlier what used to happen, if there is any land that needs to be cleared, any forest land that needs to be cleared, we require compliance under FCA as well as the Forest Rights Act. Because forest dwellers live here, scheduled tribes live here and other traditional forest dwellers. OTFDs live here. So there has to be compliance uh, within FCA also and within Forest Rights Act also. But now what is happening because the definition has narrowed down, we do not have deemed forest legally come under our natural definition of forest. So the participation of local communities have also gone down. 
which means that this can be treated as a regressive strep. Many climate uh, activists and many environmentalists, they basically treat this to be a regressive step because you know, instead of you know increasing protection in our forest areas, we are now decreasing the protection for our forest areas. Now lesser compliance is required for this conversion, lesser participation by global, uh, local communities is required for this conversion and definition has already been narrowed down. So this is the situation in India at the moment. The situation again is alarming and what is this giving rights to? Climate change, sustainability issues, biodiversity loss, because these forests are hosting major terrestrial ecosystem, biodiversity loss is happening. So all this situation, it's a grim situation for India as well as the world, which means that the world is way behind the track from what, what it needs to achieve. And there's a lot of institutionalization gap. There's a lot of financial gap, governance gap, which is required to basically be bridged in order to achieve what we wish to achieve. So that was all for today's discussion. I hope you understood everything. Now let us practice a question for prelims. And please make a note of the data that we shared here. It is going to help you. So consider the following statements regarding the Forest Declaration Assessment Report 2025. One, it assesses global progress towards the COP26 goal of halting and reversing deforestation by 2030. Two, the report finds that the world is on track to meet the 2030 targets for forest restoration. Three, according to the report, agriculture is the primary driver of global deforestation. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? A, one only, B, one and three only, C, two and three only, or D, one, two and three. Please provide your answers in the comment section and we will meet in a new video. Thank you for watching. For more informative content, like, share and subscribe. And do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.